Unauthorized opinions expressed on the internet would be censored. We are live. We are live. This is real. Welcome back to Unauthorized Opinions, uopod.com. Like, share, subscribe. It's pure propaganda and it's super cringe, by the way. I literally went to the polls with nothing in mind. I saw a can of orange soda in the parking lot. <laughs> and it's I was like, yeah, there we go. An unopened can of orange soda just chilling <laughs> in the parking lot. I was like, yeah, I got to vote for Trump, dude. Your podcast sucks it's mental mate it's absolutely mental i'll be honest i thought it was kind of offensive when you talk so much about the loch ness monster political climate and andrew treat yourself okay especially if you start i don't know getting getting in good with homeless people unauthorized opinions streaming everywhere at uopod.com cock doodly doodly do my sunflower seeds yeah it's i I know where you're going to say spit involved. Yeah. Anyways, welcome back to another Industry Says Podcast. We'll keep that in. With the Danger Cats. How are you guys doing? How are Ontario treating you, first of all? Take, take the lead. Excellent. Ontario has treated us excellent for our first foray through this province. Uh, the three of us, I've been back here since 2019. The people coming out have been amazing. And even if the show hasn't been a complete sellout, they've all been well attended. We didn't have one dud on the whole month. Agreed? Yeah. yeah. It's been awesome. great enough on that bell. Well, actually, our last show is probably our favorite. Yeah, yeah. by far. What, uh, any stark differences here since you've been here last between, you know, life in Ontario and life in Alberta? I find, you know, just in general, Ontario to be its own island of despair a little bit yeah. compared to the rest of the country. Um, I don't know how you guys feel coming from another province there. Mm. Well, uh, forget COVID. Uh, just now, present day, 25 cents per kilometer for your highway. $3 That's to get rid of garbage bags per bag in uh, Belleville. Yeah, Belleville, $3. They're charging people in Belleville. You got to buy tags, $3 per bag, 25 cents per kilometer on the highway. This is bad. Well, I can tell you where I'm from, the Durham region. We don't have to pay for our garbage, mm -hmm. other than taxes, of course. But uh, the toll highway you speak of, they built that, sold it away to foreign entities, and that is to, you know, dilute the traffic from the other highway, the 401, which is jam-packed every day. I'd say, obviously, make it free. Um, but, you know, Doug Ford, everybody. Yeah. Swallowing bees. Yeah. Swallowing your money. Hey, Amen to that. Also, one thing that irritates me is not being able to put any sports bets down out here. Because Whoa, how, what's happening there? Because all the apps that I use to gamble on, they have restrictions with your provincial laws. What do you use? Uh, Bet365 and Betway. It's very British of you. I use Bodog, so that works for me. Oh, when you okay. sign in, I have a VPN on my stuff. Yeah, I mean, I completely do oh, everything properly. Got him. <laughs> and, uh, and when you go to log in, it's like, Oh, you are logged in a place where this is not legal. You must be visiting. Sign in anyways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. Okay. Sorry, bro, dog, we'll cut that out. You're very good to me. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, that's weird. I think they have an exclusive deal with DraftKings, that's why, in Ontario. Oh, okay, that, uh, that would explain it. I'm down about 11 grand to drop DraftKings stock right, right now, so I need to hear good Did news. you actually? Yeah. That's oh, yeah. intense. Yeah. Are you a gambling man? No, no, not like I bought the stock and the yeah. stock is way down. Oh, okay. No, I mean, like, what, <laughs> the reason you bought into DraftKings is because you're gambling? Because I heard everyone talking gamble. We're three minutes into a podcast. Yeah. You go, oh, you're cool. I use this. Oh, how do you gamble? Like, so I saw society talking about it much like mushrooms, and that's also dead. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Stay away from the mushroom stock. You know? Yeah, yeah. Danny Diamond hands over oh, here. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, bad. What other investments are we investing in, guys? Mm. Ah, myself. That's life. 100%, yeah. And, Just yourself? Uh, in answer to your, do I gamble? Yes, every day with my life. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't put money down with frivolous bets with uh, frivolous people playing imaginary games. Imaginary games? Yeah, it's, uh, it's the referee's game the players are just visiting. Mm. And wow. there's an eye in the sky, a producer going like, yeah, we need to stretch this into seven games. I'm not saying sports is fake, but they always make it to overtime. You ever notice that? What excitement, what betting? So you're talking about betting and it's in direct relation to the ruination of pure sports. You guys are ruining it by betting all the time. 
You know, I used to have a catchphrase of everything was fake. I'm feeling that vibe from you. I've since backed off it a little bit, which is clearly a mistake. But I do get the vibe from you that we would converse for six to eight hours on everything being fake. True or false? Uh, yes. We are living in a simulation. This is a simulated society. Uh, offices are warehouses for stupid people. Uh, schools are indoctrination centers for uh, good factory workers. There is nothing real about this other than the real people that you interact with. Like, I know, I know real people. I'm sitting here with them. But the majority of the world is on autopilot. NPCs, yeah, but NPCs, I was gonna say, how far along this road are you, personally? In comparison, I guess, is a good way to put it. Uh, me and him get going down the road pretty uh, steady together when we, when it especially comes to sports, like we'll be uh, losing our minds a little bit here. What's a you know a third period or a fourth quarter? What game were we watching the other day where it just miraculously somehow some way? And that's because Jimmy Butler is one of the best players in the league. You can't script what he did. Yeah, but there was like I a can call a penalty. You can call a penalty. Yeah, there was a foul late did. in the fourth. And have you guys seen that any of that stuff about the NBA referee who got who admitted yeah. to the gambling? And yeah, he yeah. sort of framed it was that. Oh, they ex people expect this guy to get 10 rebounds tonight. Well, I guess rebounds are much harder, but to get over 20 points or get 10 trips to the line, it's much easier to guide that stuff than it is to actually, you know, put points up on the board. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've read that guy thing. Yeah. Philosopher over time. Yes. Yeah. In the same way as we were talking about that, uh, they have one basketball player who would like shave points. Yeah. I can't remember his name, but he was like, Rate to go like high in the NBA draft, but he fucked himself because of that. Snitches. Yeah, yeah. Snitches. Oh, sorry. What are the language? Zeros. Okay. So I'm told, I'm told by close sources that you've got a bit of a sharp tongue when it comes to the uh, words. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I am a professional comedian and writer, so uh, I, I damn well better. But uh, in my set, there's actually very little swearing that goes on. If I do swear, it is for full effect. I don't just throw profanities out there just for the fuck of it. <laughs> Ooh. It, well, you we can't see that on the internet. It means know. something. It means something when you say it, right? So, yeah. Uh, yeah I try. The lesson I'm learning today from We at Mind is that, what was it you said? $50 word, yeah. yeah. $50 lead up. Oh, yeah. $50 setup. So, you use a $50 word. Yeah, make it worth it if you're going to drop a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you don't give those words away for free on the internet. You got to come to the show. True. I don't know, you've been cutting promos with 50s in them lately. Yeah, I like to, I'm a man of the people, I like to give a little, yeah. you know, <laughs> like a reverse GoFundMe. Yeah, you give to them. Yeah, the hard RSP is collecting, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what we call on the road when we drop a 50 in the bus or something like that. We, uh, we just add it. Yeah, it just yeah. goes to the fund. Yeah, the hard R R yeah. RSP. Oh, that's our investment fund. That's yeah. what we, interesting. That's yeah. a good way to put it. Yeah. Uh, that's the name of a special thing, <laughs> uh, you know, we've all been there liquidating our speeds is what I thought you were talking about at first. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Time to recall. Yeah. Yeah. Did you cash it? Yeah. I was howled. Exclusive. You already cashed your RSP. I had to. You had to live, man. You fucked up. I did. I went in the military. That was a mistake. <laughs> they took 50%. They took 50% of my heart, too. Wow. Yeah. So well, what happened? What put you in this position? I left the military. How yeah. long ago? 2011. Whoo. Honorably discharged. No, they just left. Dishonorably. Was a lot of discharge. A lot of di more discharge than honor. I feel like I'm supposed to be the one telling you guys not to say ridiculous things, and then I just say no. We said <laughs> something. And then. Um, you know, went to school foolishly again, yeah. and there goes your lack of money. What'd you mm -hmm. take in school? First, I took radio, which yeah. is why I'm so a great speaker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna call it radio, everybody. Yeah. Uh, what up, George Stromalopoulos? He came to her graduation. Doesn't drink, by the way. Oh, wow. Oh, oh yeah? He claimed. He <laughs> claimed. That's all I'll say to that. Uh, yes, he does. Been to the stampede a few times. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, I took public advanced public relations. Okay, and let me tell you, the public relations world—not the greatest world. It's a lot of lying. Mm. And uh, 
now I'm here. So there's a big, there's about a 10 year gap there, but now I'm here. Hey, there it is. Seeking to reach truth. Yeah, yeah, you're tired of the lies, so now you're on a more truthful platform. Right. Tired of the lies, seeking the truth. That will be my book. And everything is fake. It is, it, it really is. You know, you can you can talk, oh, it's conspiracies, but it is it is absolutely not. There's uh, people that are willfully complicit in ignorance. NASA says they're going to the moon soon, didn't they? <laughs> The returning and a Canadian is gonna is gonna be on there. <laughs> Who else is gonna be on there? Uh, an African gentleman, I forget his name. What is it? The uh, magnetic tapes from the 1969, or is it the 71 or 72 one? All the footage of the original moon landing went missing. Were they recorded over it? Which one was that, Sam? Oh, they lost all of them. the telemetry data, as it's known. The black which box. is yeah. everything. Do you know how much uh, computer power they got to the moon on that they claim? 64 kilobytes or some shit? Yes, that is the equivalent of whack, 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 macaroni in the pot on an MP3. That lyric right there is <laughs> the equivalent. That lyric? Yeah, specifically that lyric. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yes. I like how he addresses the camera too, like it's a lecture. Like this isn't for you. This is, he knows there are students at home with their notepads writing. Yeah, you, you go, you go look it up. Yeah. And uh, where? At NASA. He checked the file size of like an MSN Messenger profile photo, sixty-four. Yeah. Now I like I've read and watched about most of the stuff, probably even more than I. That's why I, I love asking the questions about it, so I can understand what other people interpreted from watching the stuff. I've seen most of it. Um, what was I talking? We were talking about my friend and I today. The uh, the idea that snipers need to incorporate the rotation of the Earth into the shots that are over a couple of kilometers long. Thoughts? No, absolutely, absolutely no. Yeah, the Coriolis effect. Yeah. No. 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 That's it. No. Doesn't work. You you are uh, like a bullet doesn't go straight when you're shooting it at a long distance. You gotta. Lob it in there. Mm -hmm. This is true. And these guys know. These guys know what they're doing. It's not the curve of the Earth. They're not shooting like. Uh, supposedly, the math on this is for every mile it goes up eight inches. Like that's the elevation. So for engineering and everything, they have to like trains would have to be going uphill all the time. It's complete horseshit. You go to the Panama Canal. There is no bend in the Panama Canal. You cannot see the curve of the Earth. Easy. Lighthouses. Does does the light curve over the horizon? No, no it does. Does, it, does it reach the horizon? It's not a sun. No, but if the uh, it's just a, if the thousand watt wall. Oh, Brett, God. See this. Is, <laughs> yeah, this is a the, conversation that I want to watch. So yeah. why we're having it here, Brett? If the Earth is curved, then you wouldn't be able to see the to see the lighthouse from. A certain distance. Right, because there's a lot of things you can't see from a certain distance. Right? Of course. Like a kilometer away, if you stood away from me, I probably wouldn't be able to see you because you're a kilometer. Away. Well, that's because of the curve of the earth. I'm disappearing and I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> the earth is massive. <laughs> and you would still be visible. It wouldn't be, it's not like, you know, one kilometer is the diameter of the earth. You're not on the other side of it. You're just on the other side of the parking lot, but it's far away. So you're tiny. No, lighthouses are proof that the Earth is uh, solid and flat. So hmm. one lighthouse should be able to take a telescope and zoom in on another lighthouse somewhere else? Uh, no, because over certain distances, yes. Like there are many examples all across uh, the world that we know. <laughs> you can one. you can see uh, you can see tremendous different distances. Whereas if there if there was a curve in the Earth, you would not be able to see it. He's right about the uh, the bullet though. Uh, you, uh, theoretically, if there's people on the other side of a hill for a certain amount of distance, they teach you in the military that uh, you can just fire at a certain height and it will drop down. It's called enfiladed fire because mm. uh, of the shape of the bullets. So it lands flat on top of people and it to explode if the bullet's big enough. And I think the, the bullet drops because of um, gravity, ah, yeah. which is it's that word. <laughs> density. Density, the, yeah. density of the bullet and then the propulsion that it's shot out. What sparked all of this? Uh, you know, it's been 
fairly recent. I never even really gave it uh, too much thought, but it was definitely within the last three years. I was like, uh, this is a pack of lies. <laughs> and then and then I just started really like, uh, I didn't even start watching like, uh, this wasn't like I came across late night YouTube videos. It was these silly fucks in the car talking about like, oh, proof space is real. And then I'm like, yeah, you know what? How come I've never seen a fucking satellite picture of the earth from the top down? Or how come a plane has never circumnavigated the gold, the globe north to south? All sorts of things. And they're like, oh, it's too cold. <laughs> Up in space, it's too cold for the International Space Station to go well, north there south. a big radiation belt at the top? That's what they say. That's why it's hard to get to the moon, they say. It's an ice wall, Daddy. That's all around. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's just like none of it, none of it makes sense. And I'm going purely by Google. Like I go to Google and go, how fast is the Earth rotating? How fast is the International Space Station? <laughs> now you want to have a good time. You watch the International Space Station Instagram. They got motherfuckers up there wearing glasses. That's how I, I called this before the interview even started. That's how I know. That's how I know space is fake. Is they would never put up some point Dexter with glasses on the International Space Station. I don't know. First off, Dexter was the word you used. First off, he lose. You know, oh, I can't find my glasses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or what happens if they? floated over to the window and the sun shone in and started a fire. What's your favorite one? Where did the astronauts shit while they were in space? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would be here to that. Oh, there is. President were... diapers? I believe. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, that's, oh, what you, <laughs> that's what you do when you do highly technical medical experiments is crap in your pants while you're doing it. Oh, I hate to throw it back to the military, and that's what people do on patrols. Yeah, because yeah. you're in the military, you guys are retards. <laughs> Straight up. Where's the fifty dollar bill up to that one? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah, you better invest in twenties, I guess, your entire life up yeah. until now. That was the build up. FTFs. Wow. That's what we have in our uh, investment profile. NFTs. No FTFs. What's that? And male to females. <laughs> Yeah, would you have me if I could throw it into an over like direction? Uh, I lied to Brett that I had 10 minutes worth of comedy. I called his bluff. No, you put me on your team. <laughs> That's right. You did. I cashed in. <laughs> You're right. I did. We were, uh, I, okay, so you had a, he, Brett had a show with two mirrors and then <laughs> showcase. Yeah, it was a nice. showcase. And him and his ex fiance. Yeah. Yeah, this guy that doesn't even really exist anymore. He was uh, he wanted to be a comedian. Now he's a professional runner, running from his problems. Mm. He's deep. He was one quarter of the two meters bought that. Yes, you can go look it up online and find out who he is. But I'm not going to even bother mentioning his name. Anyway, Brett and him were doing a podcast. Yeah, and then uh, we did a live show once a week. Where we showcase like yeah. comics, and uh, we did. He had reached out to me because you like like bullshit online. I yeah, was ruffling some feathers. So we did a podcast, got along, and then he wanted to start stand up. And I said, "You got ten minutes," and he went, "Yep." And that was a lie. Uh, but <laughs> he pulled the rabbit out of his ass like he has done many times. And not only uh, did he fill ten minutes, but it was a winning ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Took home uh, the W and the cash. Kind of rice. Rice. Yeah. cash. Yeah, yeah. beat me. Yeah, everything's been winning with you guys. Yeah. Yeah, we're high production value. <laughs> Which means everything, the money euphemisms. Um, that's all I got. Yeah. Uh, Sam's ancestors were Jewish, so it, it stems from when he's <laughs> the elder one in the group, so he passes on with knowledge to us while we're held hostage in Honda Ridgeline for two and a half hours. Is that what your ancestry dot says, Sam? Exactly. I, no. <laughs> Dirt. Heritage, actually. Yeah, well, German, I, yeah, German, German, Scottish, and Irish. <laughs> Fascinating. You don't believe it's, it? It's trouble. I, I, I believe it, but my ancestors were like uh, one of the original Americans, and then they were Quakers. And Quakers are like guys that don't fucking take shit from nobody and do things their own ways. And they left the old land and came to the new country. I was similar back around, uh, but French people. 
first one to come to Canada, among the first three groups. In the 1700s. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's very deep rooted here. Yeah, unfortunately, it's French, but uh, deep roots. I have a feeling, um, if I was to tell you, Sam, the was it 23 and Me, the woman who is the CEO of 23 and Me, is the sister of the CEO of YouTube. Mm. What's going on there? How convenient. <laughs> exactly. How convenient. Yeah, this is all. Uh, it's just so murky and muddied. First off, 23 and Me. Total absolute horseshit. I had, this is way before 2020 that I was like, I am not paying for the pleasure of sending in my biological mm -hmm. DNA so you can figure it out all my way. How to kill you? Yeah, they, they really can. And information is the new currency. That is the thing. And, and people pay money to give away their most intimate details when these fuckers should be paying you for the most intimate details. It's true, everything's like mailing lists now, I think. Everything is, can you get the email to somebody to send them stuff? That's where the money is now. Mm -hmm. If uh, you guys got any schemes about that, you let me know. Use a few emails. Ooh. I just love how you said like information is to do currency, but like your information is like, oh, uh, like lighthouses can't see each other. Like, this, your proof is like, uh, why is my hair not blowing in the wind if we're spinning a thousand miles an hour? You know, I need hard, Concrete proof. You don't, you don't trust your eyes and you don't trust your senses. You're trusting what they tell you on a TV screen. This is uh, Plato's cave playing on real time. <laughs> and this guy's sitting there watching the shadows, perfectly happy. Well, I'm fucking out in the sunshine and living the life. How do you explain the sun every day doing that loop? What is that then? It's not a loop, man. It goes, it goes around. Yeah. Okay, so funny. sorry. Explain that then. What's that? That's uh, them rotating around us. We're not rotating around them. Okay. So we are what? The stars would uh, always be changing position. Is the sun around? Is it circular? Is it a I'm, I'm looking at it, but it's, it ain't fucking 50 million miles away or whatever they're saying it is. So every other thing that we can see in the sky is a sphere, except us. How do you know it's a sphere? Sure, I, I'm asking you, is it, a, is it a circle, a sphere, what do you consider? First off, you have never even seen an actual picture of another planet. Like, it is all 100% right. Photoshop. All I can see is the I guess, is the closest. They take, a, they take a picture and then they uh, take artistic liberties and they have a massive, a massive department that just does this shit all day. Big all day, day over there, that's like 80. Billion, I want to say. Fact check, everybody. Huge, uh, huge. And it, all it is is special effects and programming. And these astronauts, do you know how many astronauts there's actually been? Less than 300 of these fuckers. That's like... Uh, Roberta Blondar. Shout out, remember, you guys get hot with that in school? Yeah. I got Canada a, Darn. I got a question for you. Okay. Do you know who the first person to walk on the moon was? Um, I know the alleged first person to walk on the moon. So not Lance. Or Lance Armstrong, that's what I was gonna say. The first man to walk on the moon was Michael Jackson. <laughs> he was the first man in the mirror as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> first person to see his own reflection. <laughs> Michael right. Jackson. If the sun goes around this way, then explain why we see half of it go away and it rises in a half semicircle each day. Because it, it goes out a distance breath. So, okay, so when something goes in the distance, does it just fade away and become a dot, or does it all of a sudden just lose the bottom half of its torso? That's interesting. That kind of contradicts the whole distance thing. So what's happening? Explain a sunrise and sunset, because it's clearly not getting smaller or larger, it's just losing its shape and disappearing behind the horizon. Mm, we found a crack in the armor. There's a few cracks. <laughs> I would argue there's more cracks than armor. <laughs> but we'll find out. The thing about space and time with car rides with these guys is yeah, a two and a half hour car ride can feel like 15 minutes. Yeah, you feel like the middle child here? Yeah, 100% because this, uh, this is what I sit through. You're the rubber bushing right now or else we're already... It's metal on metal. Physical. <laughs> yeah. We're airing this off the truck. This cuts to your life. This is what we call uh, Woody Woodpecker bullshit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. yeah. Just, yeah. Knock it over the floor. <laughs> In his head, and I stir grandpa up, and the wheel just it gets tired. It's a crib, it's tired. Yeah, are there any other topics that this happens for? Uh, no, this is about the only one right now. This has been the big one for the past eight months. Yeah, eight months. Yeah, can you explain the sun? Can you explain that 
disappearing. Yeah, it goes out of uh, out of our sight. That's that's purely everything. Like you can't go to the the Pacific Ocean and see across to the other side because there's uh, water particulates in the air, and eventually you just can only see a certain amount of distance. Have you been on right. Flat Earth Guys podcast? The when I forget his name, uh, Weiss or something. No, I haven't. I don't hang out in those hang out in those circles. I sent you his email. This he emailed is me once. Purely, this is purely these guys making fun of me, mm -hmm. and then me going, you know what? These guys don't have any fucking proof. No, we don't. It's they don't. And then and then when you look at anything space related, it's fucking horseshit. It's so fake, and people eat it up. It's just a model that it happens to explain things. It, 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 whether it's real or not, yeah. I, I can combine gravity and mass and things like this and create so a model So explain that dust, itself. dust floating in the air. If there's a, a force of gravity so hard that it pulls the oceans and the mountains and holds it to the bottom of the earth. Yeah. Then how can a fucking bird be flying through the sky? How can fish be, how come they're not getting sucked to the bottom of the ocean? Because of the weight of the dust particle. Buoyancy and density. Oh, oh, suddenly science is becoming reality. Correct? Oh, it has been. How do you yes. Good. It's only your mind. Right now? Hmm. World events. What's one thing that's irritating here? Oh, what, what was I going off about the other day? Oh, the conservative fear porn, that's been bothering me. Go ahead. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. what was it, the uh, documentary, there was a documentary about how, like, sex trafficking and porn are related. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, there's always, like, a 3% yeah. fucking, they always, everybody always zeroes in on the 3%, you know? Yeah. Oh, it's like, oh, that's the evil, and they just get you riled up, like I'm doing right now about their fact-checking. <laughs> and yeah. it drives me nuts, because people are just so stupid all the time to just look past it, to be like, yeah, you're right, we got it. And it's easy to convict. It's like Bill C-11. That's another one. The, the, mm -hmm. the, hey, we're going to promote more Canadian content. How does that sound, everybody? And then every retarded Canadian is just like, oh, that's great. And it's yeah. the same thing with radio and television. When's the last time you watched Canadian television? Exactly. Oh, that's, it's like 90s commercials on YouTube. Fair enough. Yeah, for yeah. that. Yeah. It's always like the YTV commercials. The nostalgia. Yeah, you're going back to the nostalgia. Right. But even with Canadian radio, when do you listen to Canadian radio? Nobody yeah. listens to fucking Canadian radio. Nobody has listened to Canadian radio. You know, now they're doing it with the internet. Now they're convincing you, oh, hey, we're going to get more Canadian content out there. 35%. You learned that in radio school. Yeah. 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 You're going to have to start doing this podcast in French. Uh, bonjour. <laughs> That's what I got so far. My father didn't teach me French. Mm -hmm. Like, it's sort of understand it. If they got the Quebec accent, I've tried to watch things that are from France, so like, I have no idea. And then when I was doing street interviews, what was that, a few weeks ago, um, there's, a, for some reason, a lot of people from France in downtown Toronto at the time, like three different groups of people I went up to were from France. And I tried to speak French to one of them a little bit. And I'm like, I speak a little bit of French. And I said like a sentence and they're like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that would be the thought. They spat on me and killed me. Yeah. 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 They were, they were in town for the for the reptile convention. <laughs> what was that? They were in town for the reptile Rept. convention. <laughs> they were the amphibious frog. That was sort of the precursor to a lot of this conspiracy stuff with the uh, the lizard eye, the eye switching of the lizard people. Mm -hmm. I remember there was one, um, I think it was one of Barack Obama's bodyguards, and they said, this guy's a lizard person, and then when they zoomed in, they got another angle, he was really ugly. <laughs> that was all the bald guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It did look rather lizard-like. It did look like a shapeshifter. The way it, the pixels moved, it did mm -hmm. seem like the head got pointy and then round. Yeah. There was George Bush, Tony Blair, the UK Prime Minister at the time, and the Queen were all lizards. And they turned into lizards for 20 minutes a day. That's what I remember reading. Yeah. Ooh. Still true to this day, I think. You think so? No matter who becomes prime minister, has to then get indoctrinated into the lizard group. Like the faculty when they have to decide. <laughs> Speaking of 90s. Yeah, they got to be a Leanna Dream as an alien once a day out in the field. Yeah, exactly. like football practice. <laughs> uh, Joshua Jackson, shout out. He's got a new show coming out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the handsome about the long bangs, right? 
No, no the, the Vanderbeek. Oh. If we're gonna go Dawson, oh, okay. yeah. 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 I thought you were talking about Josh bangs. Hartnett. No. Guys that pull off bangs. That doesn't exist anymore. Maybe no. uh, Brad Pitt. It's about it. I have a special place in my heart for Dawson's Creek and then tried to rewatch it a couple of years ago and it's not very good. It's literally just him complaining about his girlfriend wanting to have sex with him. That's the thesis of the first like three seasons. It's him not wanting to have sex with, uh, what's her name? Tom Cruise's ex wife. Yes, Katie Holmes. Yeah. Her name was Joey, by the way, in the show. Mm. And I uh, said, so, Joey? What if I just wanted to be a teenager just for one time? What if I just wanted to be a guy and not care about the pressures of sex in high school? Uh, I, you know. It's a big topic, the pressures of sex in high school. <laughs> Let's you explore know. that. I felt that pressure. Uh, I never released it. <laughs> like, a lot of build up. I was um, saying to Hacker earlier that I was watching podcast you guys filmed with most recently, did it last night, clicked halfway through. And the first sentence I get was, you haven't whacked off in the house yet. But that's, uh, I don't know if he said that. Does he did. He went, look, does the garage kill? <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, well, Backyard for all the construction workers. Yeah. Hey, boys. Yeah. yeah, I don't like using pornography, so I was looking at the guy. Because it's a pathway to trafficking. That's right. The next thing you know, you're getting sold in the Chinese market, according to them. <laughs> so yeah, this is this is where it goes. It's like uh, having sex is the number one reason for human trafficking, and that uh, this is uh, a cope and a cop out for them to be like to blame it on pornography mm. when it's like uh, it's actually you're having sex with literally. And that's that's pretty good. Now, thanks for making me edit now. <laughs> Well, it has to be crazy enough. <laughs> because that's where the there's a gigantic war going on, and in the fog of war, you can get massive amounts of people trafficked in and out of places without any passports, and it's a perfect excuse to like, oh, these these little children don't have passports. We're rescuing them from the evil Russians. And God, or, and God. Yeah, or by, vice uh, vice versa, the Ukrainians are being uh, rescued by the Russians, and it's just like a, a black hole of money laundering and. God knows what's going on. Show us the fog of war right now. Yeah. I think it gets sucked off while you're yeah. dragging in that fog. Yeah. Sam Walker making a lot of sense. How much time we got left on that? 32 minutes. That's good. Um, 32 minutes left in the lecture class. Thank you for yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a GoFundMe link at the bottom of this. It's for. Uh, no. So they lie, they lie, 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 lie. He only has one. We need to raise some money to buy a set. Possibly a new one because this one could be. What is? You get beaten up in the garage too much. Yeah. That one. For right. those who, there's going to be a crossover now of, you know, old men that watch me and the people that watch you guys. are going to wonder about the glove. What's the origin story? Oh, uh, I think it's fairly obvious. <laughs> oh, can I explain? Construction. He wears a leather glove. Ah. Uh, <laughs> this is how he deals with a wasp attack. If there's a bee ever zooming out. Not a bee, a wasp. I don't kill bees. Okay, well, I started with wasp, I went to bee. All right. Well, that's, uh, just never have to say, tell a story, right? You don't use the same word over and over each sentence. You right click synonyms, new wasp for nice. a point. All right. Yeah. So when dealing with a hornet, though, <laughs> this guy. Are you Spanish? Uh, could be. Okay. Iranian. Could be. <laughs> Forte is very Iranian. <laughs> so the bees hovered, the wasp, the fucking whatever it is, it's hovering around. He immediately turns his back to the sun, which is manipulated by man. <laughs> and so he can see the hornet's shadow. And this is when he puts on the glove, locates where the shadow is, and just blindly grabs it out of midair and crushes it with his leather glove. So why wear the glove now? He's right. Because I'm um, doing the dirty work right now. <laughs> Dish the dishes. Yeah. yeah. So the glove is, uh, I don't want to say a bit, but it's something you guys don't subscribe to. You don't believe that, you know, you don't believe the reasoning behind the gloves. He also likes to feel of dead skin. <laughs> it's cop. It's true. That's not Joe. Okay. It's true. I didn't even have to look like Steph Curry. I knew it was it. Yeah, right. I knew it was it. Yeah. These actually, I bring these everywhere I go in case I have to engage in some sort of form of manual labor. <laughs> it happens a lot. You're doing construction area right now. People put me to work all the time. I always like to help out and I uh, like to keep my hands safe. 
Mm-hmm. He's skiing also for you. Like, who has the best skin here? Sad. Like, look how smooth his complexion is, how soft it is, right? I have acne, I'm 31 with acne. I'm a loser. This guy, 43. And Oops, we're in a double sorry. date. We're in a double date one time. My girl and his girl both fawning over him on each side, touching his skin, going, How do you get your skin so smooth? How and he just goes, Bathwater. And he cuts <laughs> into a fucking piece of pizza. He uses a knife and fork for a fucking slice of pizza. Same with a chocolate bar? Yeah, I have seen this shit, haven't you? My dad does that. It was the start of a Seinfeld thing. He eats so painfully <laughs> slow, every just little bites. This is why we have to get to the restaurant at like 3 p.m. <laughs> for an 8 p.m. show. Early bird because he likes to fucking cut his peas in half. We <laughs> also made a new rule for him, no more waffles before he Oh, I table. called this one immediately. Yeah, what? this big <laughs> waffle comes to the table two hours before showtime. And I'm like, oh, holy sugar crash over here. You're gonna be fucking snoozing <laughs> mid-show. You're gonna forget everything. And I would just call, just put it on the board. I'm getting a fucked up intro tonight. That's always, <laughs> that's always a joke because my credit is I was uh, at the Hollywood Comedy Festival, but Sam goes, he was at the Hollywood Olympics. <laughs> he goes at the Hollywood Olympics and the crowd's like, what the fuck are we about to see? It's like a contortionist? What is this? A gay contortionist? <laughs> you have to add a caveat. In there. Yeah. So I come with my hula hoop and shit. Um, and sure enough, what did we get while we're our intro? So he comes out, first of all, bowls into the mic stand. That goes crashing. Mic spills. He's got to get his flashlight out, locate it. You know, and then he's out of the ground. Put the mic back in while I was. Yeah, and he's gassed from doing his big X talk intro right across the crowd. Suck it, suck it, suck it, suck it. <laughs> Again, $50 lead up. Yeah. I'm like, I've learned so much from you. And then he throws his pit vipers in the air. You fucking ready? Right? Got the city. He knew what city he was in. Um, where was that? And then that's where the memory, that's where it gets lost in the fog of war, as I say. Yeah. And then he goes, fucking, we got the motor mouse on the internet, Uncle Hack. And he's like, you got probably the most handsome guy ever, Brett Forte. <laughs> So like the grassroot, when he remembers nothing, the first thing he can think of is just, oh, he's handsome. <laughs> and then picture 90% guys in the audience are like, oh, okay, cool. Like, not the show we signed up for. <laughs> we don't give a shit. And then uh, he goes, and that's all after. And he gets this like deer in headlights look and he forgets who he is. He forgets his own name. All because of the waffle. All because the blood yeah. is in the stomach, not the brain. Is this? Accurate? Yes. So I fucked up. <laughs> Once. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, whatever you gotta do, you gotta fuel your body. Like, you know, whether you're using your mind or your body, it doesn't matter. It takes yeah. the same amount of fuel, and uh, for whatever reason, we got a wind piece. Nice. We got those here too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're. Well, this uh, was here. Okay. Oh, yeah, this yeah, was here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, it yeah. seems like it was hundreds of years. He ago. just cleared the fog, like today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like, oh, waffle. That sounds nice. <laughs> oh, that. Like, been drunk off a waffle for days. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't the right fuel for uh, for the show. You gotta use a little jukebox of the in the booth. It's broken. Yeah. <laughs> Sign of the times. Yeah. Disgusting. Everything out here is disgusting. Uh, no, no. no. <laughs> Quite, no, but but everything is everything is broken, yeah. and I can't believe how much you guys pay for everything out here. You guys are just getting put over a barrel, and like six longshoremen come in and taxi to death. Yeah, yeah, I got looks when I said "hole of despair for Ontario." Was that looks of understanding? I don't know. Yeah, there's a, a massive population out here, and for them to be living within their confines of their simulation, like. Mm-hmm. It's just like this is your allotted space where you can go, and this is where you're allowed to wander. So just go about your days. That's what this whole subdivision is like. That build sounded really mean. That's what the whole subdivision is like there. But um, <laughs> you know, pack everybody into the. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about uh, you got PC icons, right? Um, any comments on like what is the NHL doing? I mean, we're a little bit past it now, but they turned me off. I know you got a probably huge hockey fan, but. What does the NHL need to do to get an audience back, like for myself, do you think? Because I think they've gone to the 
farthest of any sports league in terms of being political, in my opinion. What, how do we return to the goodness of what well, I remember the NHL? I'll say that they are probably the, the only league to have backlash from their own athletes and organizations by like, uh, you, you're probably getting to like the pride thing and all that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't want to hammer you with it. <laughs> okay. well, we're used to that. You don't see who we got to ride in the car with? You can throw it right in our face and it's okay. <laughs> yeah. We got our own Ian Provorov. Yeah. yeah. Ivan. Ivan. What yeah. I call him? Ian? Yeah. We know what's up where you're on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All that. What do they need to do? I. Yeah. Simple. Let them play. Let them just play some goddamn hockey. That's it. It's, a, that, it's a, such a simple solution. If you look at it, uh, like, what does the consumer want from the product? And it was like, wh when was hockey at its highest? When it was the most violent? We love violence. So just let them fucking get, tell them refs, fuck off. Put the, <laughs> put the whistle in your pocket, they'll figure it out. They had tough guys for a reason. They just police the whole life. You want Bob Probert, my Bob, that, that dog right there? You want him going nuts? No, he's on two grams of cocaine and he's gonna beat the hell out of your whole team. Don't wake him up. That's all you need. You need a gacked out fucking maniac at the end with CTE that's just ready to pop at any moment. You smack him on the shoulders and it's just like snaps him right away. That'll, that'll even the game out. And then we're back to where we need to be. Yeah, but I like seeing this move where they fucking. No, I hate that. Like, I hate that. The Michigan? The Michigan. I fucking hate it. I hate it. Classic? That was yeah. fun. I can't wait for somebody to fucking go to knock that puck out and they take a whole front row up. They'd be like, oh, well, looks like that move really worked, didn't it? Smart boy. You ever show anybody the clips of the uh, skate throat slits? Oof. Uh, those yeah, are tough to watch. You saw you see that for the first time? They don't wear throat parts anymore. Are they all wearing that Thomas Cole? Pl 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 <laughs> <laughs> you mean. What are they doing now for the throat? I don't Nothing. see always wearing the shield anymore. They're just that skilled. Oof. What happened? It's got to be like a, an advancement in uh, something they wear. I don't know, maybe the collars come up higher or something, I'm not sure. I don't see them removing safety from goalies all of a sudden when they're saying like, oh, you can't hit each other elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Must be something. You know, there's a clip I saw the other day of, it was Bill Burr and Wayne Gretzky. I don't know who shows up, 2017. And Bill Burr was saying, or the interviewer says, how, are, how is hockey gonna get to the next level? You know, it's getting better and better. And they, they, I give them a B plus, but how do they get to be an A minus and an, or an A plus? And he says, you don't do anything because if you need, want to get to the A plus, then you're gonna have to start, you know, having pink jerseys. And uh, I don't know who he says gonna sing. I'll say Cher is gonna have to sing. And then Wayne Gretzky goes, huh, I don't think I'm ever, we're ever gonna see the Flyers in a pink jersey. And it didn't, it didn't take very long for them to get to that next level and do those exact same things. Mm -hmm. So uh, shout out Bill Burr for being an oracle, I guess, but it went that way. It turned me off big time. And as a Leafs fan, you know, I'm easily turned off. But yeah, failures. Yeah, and um, I've just found myself turning to the UFC, frankly, for the say whatever you want, we don't care. Mm -hmm. sort of just thing. fight, wear whatever the <laughs> fuck you want. You want pride shirts, wear them, we don't care. Just show up and fight. There That's was it. a guy who got kicked out of the UFC for in a speedo and fight. Well, that one up. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'm actually told uh, that you carry, what was it, 20 speedos on you? Look, not that many, but uh, I got a couple. The occasions arrive. You never know when you got to swim. That's uh, very true. Yeah, Anders. Mm -hmm. We get hot tub parties going on too. Yeah, well, we got these things. <laughs> never, never been invited to one of those. Math tub parties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The water bowl. Yeah, I do plays a water bowl. What's water bowl? And oh. you get it all sudsed up, right? And then you just start, you know, guess. <laughs> what is the bowl? Where does that come from? The water mole. Hey, there's whack a mole. Oh, and there's okay. water mole. Mole. Okay. Yeah, so you got the in, in the shroud of the bubbles in the fog of war. You mole. don't know where that mole's going to pop up. They didn't have the plated one in a couple months ago. You got to try to get it with your mouth <laughs> instead of a mouth. Too many kids there. <laughs> Um, you guys, you guys have a plate out there? No, they don't do that. No, it's not just anymore. a giant. You used to have it, so you know what it is. Yeah, it just feels like the '90s in there. You go in there, it's floor is sticky, too many kids. They got crappy burgers, and there's mm -hmm. some. You can drink in there though. Yeah, you can walk around with booze and play you around six year olds, mm -hmm. and, uh, and play all the games you forgot about. Giant hungry hungry hippos is a good one. Okay, 
But then there's the, uh, the parents that just let their kids sit. One parent was letting their kids sit on the hungry, hungry hippos, just doing nothing. Wasn't playing, just sitting there. We're waiting there. Long story short, we took the kid. Hey, how's the kid doing? Uh, trafficking now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See? Big it's problem. a fog of war. Big problem. Fog of war. Yeah. You Shit happens. In the news business. That's be the name for this episode. <laughs> the fog of war. Yeah. Well, it's all sorts of bells and shiny whistles. I remember when I was a kid. Uh, arcade. Sick. Yeah, arcade was the internet where you get picked up by guys in vans. <laughs> That's what they do. That was the number one recruiting place for pimps. Was at arcades and like bus stations. They're used to dealing quarters, anyways. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, pimp is a very flattering term. That <laughs> file, by the way. Just so you know, pimps. Yeah, I know. But arcades now are gone. Where did they go? Now they're calling them yaps. What youth attracted people? <laughs> they're okay, right. It's no longer maps. It's My yaps. Track. No, okay, we've gone on from that. Yeah, it's youth. Hmm. So uh, let's get back to it. Uh, back to uh, just uh, first off, I could give a rat's ass about professional sports yeah. and all this uh, horse shit because it's a gigantic distraction. You should have seen the the slovenly police officers. I was going to say cower in officers. their <laughs> cower in their boots. The last time the Flames had a had a playoff run and everybody showed up, mm -hmm. the Red Mile. Wasn't yeah, those. Yeah. Uh, they were hiding. They were smiling and shaking hands and being real nice because they knew if they took away these guys' hockey, they were getting fucked. And there was nothing they can do about it. Either. If you have a thousand people, you can go anywhere. <laughs> Just picture this being like shown into a geography class in grade nine. <laughs> Listen, kids. If you have a thousand people, you can go anywhere. There is nothing they can do to stop you. And <laughs> famous words said on January fifth. <laughs> the next day. <laughs> what clothes are you keeping? Yeah. <laughs> so they uh, they placate the population with uh, sports and gatherings and stuff like that. Um, I unlike uh, Uncle Hack here, I enjoy the spirit of the sport and letting these guys play. But it has become commercialized, and you know what? The NHL a couple of years ago needed to know your personal healthcare information to come into the building and enjoy their products. So, being as everybody in the NHL loves to give their information out and uh, are so so well with it, I think the referees should tell us where their kids go to school and <laughs> what neighborhoods they live in, and then we can play a hockey game. We're, we wow. got to get Sam on all the podcasts. Wow. Yes. Uh, our mutual friend Keen get him on the, uh, what's the Sam Tripoli one, I think, probably. Ooh, there, there you go. Tinfoil podcast. Yeah. I, I, I respect what uh, Sam does for the, the Normie version. Couple Sams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a great comic, too. I've watched that, yeah. yeah. And uh, who knows, we could even get you on Roseanne. <laughs> Guest starring role. Go to the club right now. Uh, Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'd be uh, Roseanne's avenging ghost. Because <laughs> they killed her off. Yeah, but you'd probably be one of was the sister's husband. What's her name? No, 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 I could be the guy that sold her the fence that she died from. And I come back and apologize to somebody, and then I get the DJ hooked on it. Is that how it's killed her too? <laughs> Is that how they killed her off? A fence? What do you mean? Yeah, fentanyl. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, they said she opened that. Yeah. yeah. That's mean. Oh yeah, I mean, two and a half men, they just said he died, like flew off a cliff or something. Charlie Sheen, I believe. Yeah. And then for Roseanne, they're saying she OD'd on fentanyl? Was yeah. it Deidre's stuff? Whose stuff was it? Uh, it was my stuff. I sold it to her. Oh shit. And I'll be on the guest spot. <laughs> okay. Good for you. Dan, you had a new back pain. You look like you've lost a lot of weight. <laughs> he had a lot of weight. Yeah, I know, he's uh, dying of AIDS. <laughs> mm. Who is it? Last thing here, uh, Magic Johnson theories. I know you've got one. Oh, it's magic. Cure his AIDS from being too good at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Easy shout out. Um, I think that's all the time we have, guys. Uh, Canadian tour. Well, I don't know how many times you got, how many spots you got left here? Ontario? We got Cornwall tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah. We like to do our press at the very end. <laughs> That's how we do it. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't smell. Don't come. It's too late. Yeah. You fucked up. You missed out. 
And then we're back in Alberta, baby. Yeah, but we will be back out in Ontario. We had, a, we had a great time and we can't wait to do it again. If you do one of these on your dime at one of your shows, and we'll, and we'll do one of these. That's a great offer. <laughs> he's what? Look, he's giving <laughs> what? We're doing a what? Oh. Podcast live on one of your. Do you know how fucking ridiculous that would be having an audience of our maniacs trying yes. to like oh, we tried we it once, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, would, we wouldn't get a, a word edgewise. Well, the yeah. people at home could still hear. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. they, 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 we lock really? the phones They're for a We don't want anyone at home tuning in. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'd have to get like a chicken wire fence because the <laughs> would be raining down yeah. upon us if we pulling that shit. But so like, it was, if it was a glory hole. Wait, what? It's like Roadhouse if it was a glory hole. It's accurate. All right. So <laughs> can, I make, oh, can I make the book? No, no. No. What's the book? Oh. Oh, uh, they call me Stan and Frank, and I'm keeping a diary. <laughs> Receipts on everyone. Yeah. Receipts on everyone. Okay, if I meet you, you make the book. All right. Any final words from anybody? Thanks for having us. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Where is this going to be played? The internet. Oh, okay. You like how I announced it? The <laughs> internet? <laughs> and go on. You put He's still trying to figure out where that is. He did come down there and said, where's the internet? <laughs> <laughs> Spotify, iTunes. Okay. iHeartRadio. Oh, wow. What am I missing? YouTube. YouTube, Amazon, Rumble, Amazon Podcasts. Ooh, Rumble. Any place you get podcasts, it'll be on there. Cool. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.